Thank you. I recognize now for five minutes, Ms. Bonamici. Uh, thank you so much, Chair Owens and Ranking Member Wilson. W when I learned that the subcommittee was holding this hearing today, I was excited. Maybe we'd engage in a substantive discussion uh, with our colleagues on the other side of the aisle about how we can work together to fix a student loan system that doesn't work uh, for millions of borrowers. Could we advance legislation that makes college more affordable and accessible? But unfortunately, we're hearing too many partisan attacks on the President's historic actions to support some of our nation's most vulnerable borrowers. In reality, the administration's recent actions have empowered borrowers, enabled families to contribute to the economy, and cleared a, a path uh, to reduce the cost of college. I, I wish we were working on a bipartisan basis on this. In Oregon, the Department of Education's limited public service loan forgiveness waiver would help more than 2,000 public servants, and I've spoken with many of them, um, uh, who are holding uh, 1 point, uh, 120 million in federal student loans. Regulations that eliminate interest capitalization and allow the Department of Education to cover unpaid interest balances will significantly lower monthly payments for borrowers, increase their financial flexibility, and give them more peace of mind. And I, and I want to note when we have this conversation about the importance of, of uh, programs that uh, lead students to a, a, a well-paying career, there are many jobs that don't pay well that are still really important. I know somebody who teaches at an alternative high school. Doesn't make very much money, but that's a really important job. So we, we have programs like the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program for that very reason. Um, uh, Mr. Gudkari, I introduced a bipartisan legislation called the Streamlining Income Driven uh, Manageable Payments on Loans for Education, or SIMPLE Act, to streamline income-driven repayment. Uh, and ranking members uh, Wilson and uh, Scott introduced the Lowering Obstacles to Achievement Now Act to provide a comprehensive approach to reduce the cost of college, cap spiraling interest rates, improve the uh, PSLF program, and create a sa safety net for vulnerable borrowers. And it's evident that many of us have substantive workable ideas, and we need to work together to get them across the finish line. How can Congress build on President Biden's proposed changes to the income-driven repayment plans to further improve the student loan system for current and future borrowers? Uh, thank you, Representative, for the question. Uh, we need to increase college affordability by increasing the value of the Pell Grant and by creating a system, a federal-state partnership that drives down college costs um, and encourages state investment and affordability in public colleges. On the um, loan repayment system, we see the administration making targeted fixes that build on the SIMPLE Act, some of the ideas contained there, um, to IDR. Um, and uh, one of the things that's really important to highlight about the IDR program is that it helps limit material hardship for borrowers. So for those who are making between 200 and 300 percent of the federal poverty line, 40 percent of those uh, borrowers report material hardship, a challenge making rent, uh, paying for food, paying for health care. And as a result, this IDR plan increases the income exclusion, the income that is not part of the repayment. So. Um, I think that those are some of the ideas that are, that are compelling in some of the actions that they've taken. I think it would be important for uh, the administration and Congress to work together to also hold low-performing programs accountable when they generate a lot of debt and limited Absolutely. gain in earnings. Yeah, we, we've worked on that too, especially with the for-profit institutions. Uh, I, I want to follow up on some of the um, uh, questions that have been asked about the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program. Uh, the so-called Real Reforms Act from my Republican colleagues includes an alarming proposal to eliminate the Public Service Loan Forgiveness Program, and we know it's a powerful tool to recruit and retain public service workers. I urge all of my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to recognize the value of supporting educators, firefighters, nurses, and others who choose to serve our communities. And yes, we need to work upstream and, and overall make the cost less, but for people who do go into these public service jobs, we need to have a, a path for them. So, so, Mr. Gadkari, why is the PSLF program important, and how can it incentivize students, including those from low-income families, to pursue a career in public service? Well, the PSLF program, which the administration has worked to fix and uh, make consistent with congressional intent, is intended to support public service, whether as a, uh, in a nonprofit and military in, uh, for police officers. It helps to address the pay disparities that people in public service may face. 
Thank you so much. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, before I yield back, I would like to introduce into the record a letter from the National Education Association submitting their comments on the implications of President Biden's student loan policies. Without objection. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and I yield back the balance of my time.